Hey guys, my name is Donnie and welcome to another episode of building a motorhome from scratch. Now guys, in this video I'm, go I'm going to be focusing on fabricating what's going to become the cab area. In other words, that's the spot where the driver and the passenger is going to sit in front. I'm going to have to fabricate a floor and a firewall and everything that separates the engine from the interior of this cab. Now guys, as you can imagine, fabricating or building a cab from scratch does present a whole lot of complicated hurdles that I need to overcome, especially the fact that the cab's now going to be sitting on top of the engine instead of behind the engine. And I still want to use the original dashboard and steering column and AC and everything that came with the Iveco. So, let me quickly show you what I've been working on and what my plan of attack is and then I can start cutting and fabricating. Okay guys, I'm gonna be jumping around a little bit, but there's a lot that I need to explain before I can start working on this cab. This is what the original design looked like. Very simple and plain, just a floor and a firewall and a cover for the engine bay. But what I've gone and done is I went ahead and I set up the driver and the dashboard and everything the way that it will be on the motor home. and what I did realize is that I can now use this double couch and still have enough room to access the driver's seat and the passenger seat because this new motor home is a lot wider than the original Iveco was. Another thing that I really want to do guys is I want to keep this dashboard intact. I don't want to have to cut it or change it or modify it if that is not necessary. So with this setup, all I need to do now is extend this dashboard by about 400 millimeters and I'll find a way to do that so it'll look nice and pretty. But apart from that, everything will be in the right spots and everything will work exactly the way that it did on the original car. And what makes that awesome is that this dashboard has got an innard that has the AC unit and all the electronics and everything on the inside. And I really didn't want to cut or change that. Speaking of which, I went ahead and I took that in it and I set it up on top of this motor home in more or less the spot where it needs to sit after everything has been put into position. Now guys, the hurdles that I did come up with this air conditioning system and everything is that I needed clearance for the engine and the AC and the dashboard and everything to fit the way that it should. That's why I went ahead and I just temporarily fit this dash area on this motor so that I could be sure that I would have enough clearance so that I can make the firewall and everything where it needs to be. And what I did realize is that unfortunately I'm gonna have to lift this cab area by an additional 100 millimeters because that dashboard won't be able to go any lower than it does already because it is close to where the engine is. Now guys, as far as the engine goes, I'm going to have to be able to reach stuff like the filters and so on to make it serviceable. And also I need to entertain the fact that I'm probably or may, might or one day will have to be able to take this engine out without removing this whole cab area. So those are the things that I really needed to take in consideration. So I'm going to have to make a floor and a firewall and everything that'll still afford me the opportunity to reach things like the filters and so on and also be made in such a manner that I'll be able to easily take everything apart so that I can remove the engine if need be. And that brings me to what the new design looks like for this cab area and I'll show that to you quickly. So this is basically how the new cab looks. It's a little bit more complicated and there's a little bit more that needs to go into it. But I think it is very much doable. So guys, building this cab is going to consist of many, many different pieces of aluminium that I'm going to shape and form and make into position. As you can see now, I've gotten an idea of how I'm going to be building this thing. And my, my plan of attack is that I'm going to start from the bottom I'm going to first make the floor area, floor section and so on. And then I'm going to start with the front and make sure that all of this fits and that I still have access 
do things like the dipstick and the oil and so on in the front and make sure that the AC and everything the pipes can come out and there's enough room for the brakes and the clutch and the accelerator and so on on this side and after I've made this front area I will then be able to make this box that's going to enclose the engine and also make it so that I'll have some access spots where I can get to the filters and so on so guys there's a lot of things going to happen now um, I hope it makes a little bit of sense but I'm going to start with the floor work my way to the front and then work on the tunnel and let's see how far I get Okay guys there we go time for an update I've now finished this floor section and I've got to tell you guys that even though this aluminium is three millimeters thick I still struggled so much to not get this aluminium to warp when I welded it so I did not do continuous welds all over just on this length over here but apart from that I just made some very very long tacks to weld everything together so the next thing that i can start doing now is i can start working on what's going to become the front of this cab section and once again i'll be making all of these aluminium pieces separately all of the sections separately and then i will just tack everything into position and once i'm happy that the fitment is okay i can then weld everything into its final position and then i can weld this whole thing onto the frame and everything should be nice and strong. So let's get going.
Okay guys, there we go, time for an update. I've now finished making all of these small independent pieces and I've tacked everything together and this is the basis of the firewall slash floor slash engine tunnel. But I'm happy with what it looks like now. I can just make a lid to cover the engine but before I do that I first want to take off that dashboard skeleton and just finish all of these welds that I couldn't reach and then I'll just move this whole floor out a little bit so I can just weld these welds properly without causing a fire or melting anything and then I'll put this cab or this floor piece back into position and then I'll just tack it onto this frame permanently and that should be that so let's get going. Okay guys, there we go. I was once again successful at doing a thing. And guys, this firewall slash floor slash engine cover came out looking very, very nice. I'm very, very happy with it. Everything is welded. It is rock solid now, fitted to the frame and it will never ever come off or come loose. Uh, now guys, I've got a little bit of a confession to make and that is that uh, you know, I won't call myself lazy, but I always try and find the easiest way to do something. And guys, this was by far the easiest that I could think of to do this, to make this, uh, this part of the, the vehicle. But it did take a lot of time. There was a lot of welding, a lot of bending, and a lot of design that had to go into it. That's why I had to keep the skeleton of the dashboard on here all the time because there are little nooks and crannies and very very tight tolerances to make everything work but it came out looking absolutely amazing and guys this engine cover over here i did put a couple of rev nuts on it so it can be taken off if you need to work on the engine and i made sure that there's enough room to even be able to take out the head or something like that if you need to do some major work on the engine but apart from that you can easily access stuff like the oil filter and so on from underneath and the fuel filter so it will probably never have to come off except for if you need to do some serious work on the engine but it is rock solid you can walk on it it'll never ever bend or go anywhere 
and it is lightweight and it's going to be the perfect base for what's going to become the cab area let me just walk back without falling right so guys now you can see over there is going to come the the, the, the driver's seat because we are right hand driving in South Africa and that's going to be the passenger seats two of them and they do fit I did make sure that they fit and the dashboard's coming from there to there so I need to cut a hole in there where the pedal box and so on goes and then I can fit everything and then I'm going to extend the, the dashboard by about 400 millimeters maybe let it come around or something like that at a later stage another thing that i'm also contemplating is whether or not i'm going to be making a roll cage for this vehicle just to give it extra strength but this aluminium is very very strong so i might just put an extra bar on the sides for a side impact at the later stage but i cannot do that now until i figured out how i'm going to be working uh, how i'm going to be installing these electric side windows where they're going to drop down into but guys that's it for this week a whole lot of progress has been made once again and I'm very very happy with the results and I'm very glad that you guys joined me if there's any questions or any suggestions please don't hesitate to, to ask or tell me in the comments because this is a learning curve for me as well and I just hope that I'll make this motor as best as I possibly can any guys till next week cheers